ever stepped in dog poo on your way to an important business meeting? Imagine you're all suited up, dreams in your pocket, confidence in your stride, and then, squish, the world comes to a screeching halt. There's that moment of shock, a beat of disbelief. You lift your foot, hoping against hope that it's a rogue squashed tomato or a discarded chocolate bar. But alas, the universe has other plans. You've been handpicked for an impromptu ballet with a pile of dog poo. The irony is almost poetic. One minute you're on top of the world, the next you're doing the poo-poo shuffle. It's like a slapstick comedy, a cosmic joke, a jolt that reminds you, even with a power suit and a PowerPoint, you're not immune to life's little stink bombs. So here you are, on the sidewalk, in a moment of poetic pause. As they say, Shakespeare couldn't have scripted it better. Now begins the grass wipe waltz, a dance no one wants to master. This is not your typical ballroom dance, my friends. No, this is a frantic scraping of the shoe on the grass, a desperate attempt to part ways with the unexpected canine gift. Imagine this, you're out there, on the green, performing a dance as old as time itself. You're not doing the tango, the salsa, or the cha-cha, no, you're doing the grass wipe waltz, a dance that's less about the rhythm and more about the necessity. Your foot twists and turns, swipes and swerves in a rhythm that could only be described as desperate jazz. It's a dance of necessity, a dance of survival, a dance that says, I've got a meeting to attend and I can't afford to bring any extra guests. So you waltz, you scrape, you twist and turn, all the while maintaining an air of elegance and grace. After all, who said dealing with dog poo couldn't be classy? And that, my friends, is how you earn bonus points for style and flair. As you hobble to the nearest restroom, it's time for some poetry in motion. Now let's give Shakespeare a run for his money. Picture yourself as the protagonist in a tragic comedy, the hero battling the unexpected, the underdog, or rather, the undershoe. So here's a haiku dedicated to our sticky predicament. Stepped in gift canine, a scent that's not of roses, meeting's aroma, redefined. Isn't it amazing how a simple or not so simple step in dog poo can inspire such depths of creativity? It's almost therapeutic like spilling your woes into the verses of a diary but with a twist of humor and a dash of squish. So next time you find yourself in a similar mess why not try your hand at crafting a haiku of your own? You'll be surprised at the poetic genius lurking under the surface of such unfortunate events. Who knew dog poo could inspire such profound poetry? Welcome to the bathroom scramble. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to clean that shoe. Now the bathroom scramble is not for the faint-hearted. This is a covert operation, a delicate dance, a high-stakes game of hide and no-seek. You're a secret agent and your shoe is the evidence that must be scrubbed clean. First, you'll need to locate your tools. Paper towels, check. Hand dryer, check. Soap, check. Too bad there's no shoe polish in this joint, but hey, we work with what we've got, right? This is where your resourcefulness comes into play. Think of yourself as MacGyver, but instead of defusing a bomb, you're tackling a poo-smeared shoe, which let's be honest feels like an equally urgent crisis. Now time is of the essence. You've got to be quick, nimble, and above all, stealthy. The last thing you want is someone walking in, catching you mid-scramble, so you're going to need to multitask. One hand works the soap and water, the other on the lookout for any incoming traffic. The paper towels become your best friend. They're there to mop up the mess, to dry off the evidence, to be discarded without a second thought. Use them liberally, my friends. This is not the time for conservation. Then, the hand dryer. Some might see it as a tool for drying hands, but you, you see it as your secret weapon. Position your shoe just right and let the warm air do its magic. Just remember to act casual. If someone walks in, you're just, uh, drying your shoe. Perfectly normal behavior. And the soap, well, that's your ace in the hole. It's there to cut through the grime, to erase the evidence, to bring back that new shoe shine. Yes, it's a desperate move, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you handle a poo crisis with the grace of a secret agent. You've navigated the bathroom scramble, emerged victorious, and hopefully, left no trace of your clandestine operation. Now, it's time to step back into the world, shoe clean, head held high, ready to conquer that business meeting or at least try not to step in any more dog poo. Now, it's time for the aromatic announcement. Brace yourselves. You stride into the meeting room every bit the confident professional. The air shifts, eyebrows raise, and noses twitch. The new scent in the room is causing a stir. Is it the latest cologne from Paris? The newest organic air freshener? No, it's something much more... earthy. You take a moment to let the suspense build, then with a twinkle in your eye you confidently declare, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you a fresh and unique aroma to enhance our discussions today. A murmur goes around the room. It's earthy, it's real, it's avant-garde. There's a mix of laughter and relief. You've turned an embarrassing situation into a humorous icebreaker. The meeting kicks off on a lighter note, and you, the protagonist of this hilarious dog poo disaster, are at the heart of it, unflappable, and still smelling like success. It's not dog poo, it's avant-garde. Next on the agenda, a solo game of footsie under the table. Yes, you heard it right. Now, who says business meetings are all about numbers and pie charts? Sometimes it's about keeping your footwork as nimble as a ballet dancer to keep that doggy do aroma at bay. Picture yourself in a boardroom surrounded by your colleagues. There's a big table under which lies your secret, the aromatic souvenir from your morning walk. The challenge here is to keep that secret from becoming the talk of the meeting. So you start a game, a secret mission. Your foot the unsuspecting hero of this saga, is now a player in an underground game of Twister. Left foot green, right foot blue, just make sure the brown doesn't reach the noses of your unsuspecting colleagues. You twist and turn, navigating the undertable terrain like a pro. Your foot, once known for its prowess in soccer or perhaps its fancy footwork on the dance floor, is now mastering a different kind of sport, stealthy footsie. It's a game of patience, agility, and a whole lot of internal screaming. You're like a chess player planning your moves three steps ahead. You're not just avoiding the CEO's Italian leather shoes, but also the intern's oversized boots and the marketing manager's stilettos. Each move is calculated, each slide is strategic. You're channeling your inner James Bond, but instead of dodging bullets, you're dodging nostrils. Your foot is an unsung hero, the Odysseus of the corporate world, braving the treacherous waters of the office floor, one step at a time. And just when you think you've mastered the art of clandestine footwork, someone drops a pen. As it rolls under the table, you hold your breath, your heart pounding like a drum. But fear not, for your foot is a seasoned player now, deftly sidestepping the rolling pen and the approaching hand. And as the meeting draws to a close, you let out a sigh of relief. You've done it. You've navigated the undertable maze with the finesse of a seasoned diplomat. Who knew business meetings could turn into an Olympic event? Now let's delve into the philosophical reflection of this whole debacle. As we find ourselves ankle deep in this predicament, let's not forget how life loves to throw curveballs, or in this case, poo balls. Just like in business, sometimes the path to success is littered with unforeseen obstacles. Perhaps it's a difficult client, a missed deadline, or a rogue email sent to all staff instead of just your work buddy. And sometimes it's simply a steaming pile of dog poo on an otherwise pristine sidewalk. In these moments, we show our true stripes. Do we let the stench get us down, or do we roll up our trousers and make the most of a sticky situation? It's a test of character, a trial by fire, or rather, by feces. And remember, the true mark of a professional isn't avoiding the poo. It's handling it with grace, humor, and a good pair of disposable gloves. Remember, it's not about the poo on your shoe, but how you deal with the poo. Prepare yourselves for the grand exit. Our protagonist, now a seasoned veteran of the poo predicament, rises to leave the meeting. He's navigated through this stinky situation with the finesse of a tightrope walker over a vat of hot lava. As he stands, he catches the eye of his colleagues, offers a knowing smile, and delivers the line of the century. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches, or the poo. The room falls into a stunned silence, then explodes with laughter. The tension breaks like a popped balloon, and our protagonist is suddenly the star of the show. He's not just the guy who stepped in dog poo. He's the guy who turned a disaster into a moment of comic brilliance. And with that, he exits stage left, leaving his colleagues not with the memory of a mishap, but an unforgettable story of resilience and humor. And that, my friends, is how you turn a poo catastrophe into a memorable exit. After the meeting, it's time for the aftermath. This is where your resilience truly shines. You've not only survived the great poo catastrophe, you've thrived. Now it's time to share your tale of woe and triumph with your colleagues, who are surely awaiting your return with bated breath. Recount your story with gusto, from the initial squish, to the clandestine bathroom cleanup. Describe your footsie game under the table, keeping your soiled shoe out of sight and out of mind. Let them marvel at your ingenuity, your spirit, your sheer audacity. Expect a range of reactions. Some might cringe, others might laugh, and a few might even give you a standing ovation. You've become a legend in your own right, a beacon of resilience in the face of adversity. Because remember, you're not just a business person, you're a warrior, a survivor of the great poo catastrophe. 
Finally, it's time to leave your legacy. Picture this, you, the conqueror of the Great Pooh Catastrophe, immortalizing your experience in a humorous Yelp review. Here's a potential headline, Sidewalk on Fifth, A Journey of Humility and Resilience. Your review begins, A regular sidewalk? I think not. This particular patch of concrete has been my springboard to wisdom. I stepped in dog poo here, right before a crucial business meeting, five stars for life-changing experiences. You continue, The incident taught me the grass wipe waltz, the art of poo etry in motion, and the grace of the bathroom scramble. I even introduced a new earthy aroma to the boardroom. So would I step here again? Absolutely. And there you have it. You've turned a misstep into a laugh, a story, a legacy. Remember, it's not about the step you took in dog poo, it's about the steps you take after. And who knows, maybe this will be the start of a groundbreaking new business idea. Poo-proof shoes, anyone?